Okay, so um, I think we will start with the helmet. With the, with the, with the nut piggy nose skull face. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, me, me and Michael were looking at the helmet last night, I and mean, it's 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 not quite as piggy in the book. Yeah, yeah but I know it, um, it, with the it's being all black, it looks quite piggy. Um, so we'll start with that, and then the the red armor afterwards, because I think awesome. that would be like a nice chapter for the the claw and the flesh and the mask, because it's like the internal part. So I think that should be good. You're going to go with quite a bright red, aren't you, for the for the armor more towards like the the traditional? Yeah, 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 quite a like a Ferrari red, a bit like a red non metal with higher contrast. Yep, but uh, not as extreme as as I've done on the gold. Um, all right, so um, here we are. The claw is done, and next part would be the um, skull mask on his face. Um, we won't go for uh, piggy pink. <laughs> we just uh, go for a decent bone color. Um, you can see I rearranged the palette. Um, I have some uh, rucksack tan from P3 here, and I'm adding some black. And a bit of um, US brown from the uh, Model Air range. The black you have is regular, is it's, model color? It's, yeah, it's just uh, model color black. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a good black that one I, I struggle with the new the new one from games workshop i think it's a, a bad and black yeah it's it's quite thick um and i, I think for a black it, it, it doesn't need to be thick because black is it, it covers so well you know yeah that's true yeah i tried the the ebon black and didn't like it as well um i really like the old chaos black because it had quite mm -hmm. a nice little sheen to it when it dried it was a bit like the the spray foundation, it's not 100% matte. Mm -hmm. And that was actually quite nice to darken things down. So the, um, the one from model color is a bit the same. I now know to keep up to date with, um, with paint ranges and when there's a paint that you like to make sure you buy at least two or three of them. Yeah. <laughs> so that you know, so that they, when they disappear, you, you've got a couple left. Something I still struggle with is painting lighter colors. Are there any like uh, tips that you could give when when approaching that? Because like say with with like a black or a dark blue, they tend to cover in one, possibly two coats if you need it. Mm -hmm. Whereas with with light colors, you, you tend to have to to do a few more. Yeah, but actually there is there is no way around it. it, it some some uh, colors cover a lot better. Uh, for example, here the um, the P3 um, that is in the mix mm -hmm. that covers extremely well, and so with, even within two layers, you should be good to go actually, and mm -hmm. you have a nice uh, like a, a bone color. Um, but yeah, with other colors, you just have to do layers uh, over layers to to get them really covering. Um, I think it's always easier if you want to paint a light color to actually start even brighter. Like very light, and then work downwards. Yeah, as opposed to go okay. Yeah, because that way you don't have to blend in the light tones and just uh, work in the shadows. It's mm -hmm. a, it's a lot easier for most people. Okay, and the second layer. I guess it comes back to what what you were saying actually in the the first video. It's it's patience. Just, yeah, just being patient and careful. And another thing that I already mentioned here is, see, I'm still working with the same brush. I didn't put, uh, went to the palette and had to pick up color again. I can just do the second layer. The first one is already dry, and that is actually due to the uh, long bristles of the brush because mm -hmm. they just store the paint a lot longer. Some, something I've just noticed now, actually, this isn't really a question, but if, if you're listening to this, that to notice that the way Ben holds the miniature and the way he braces his hand against his other hand to, to keep it steady um, so that you, you can get a nice smooth stroke. But I remember before when I was I first started painting, I, I didn't really do that. And 
be shaking all over the place trying to do something and, and getting getting paint everywhere. <laughs> yeah, but it's also uh, when I paint at home, it's not that extreme. I'm not just holding the miniature that but that tightly, but uh, on the cam, every like single shaking is just incredible because it's zoomed in that much. Right. You're like, right. Uh, when we did the first shooting of the very first DVD, we all went dizzy when watching the footage and like, oh no, that is <laughs> that is simply impossible. So, uh, right now here, I'm just holding the uh, miniature. Also, it's a actually it's a, an egg holder uh, from wood. Nice. And th this way, I can place it here on the table and turn it, it around. It's it's good because you you have a nice grip. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I used to especially holding just the bottom of the base. Because like, mm -hmm. I, I, of course, build everything together. Yeah. You know, it's all glued first and then undercoated and, and ready to go. But hold, holding just the base can get a bit tiring for the fingers. And it's much more comfortable to hold it when it's, it's fixed. To Definitely. It really does. Especially when you have, also when you work on, with a very small wood socket or a very small cork. Mm -hmm. After like a full day of painting, your fingers just hurt yeah. because you have to. I know I um, actually went down to the, the local... Um, I don't know what you'd call them, but we call them joiners. They're just where they have spare off cuts of wood. Mm -hmm. And I got them to, to get like a, a nice piece of wood and just cut it into some squares for me. And then I took it home and drilled some holes and now yeah. I can now I have a, something more substantial to yeah, hold yeah, on to. Yeah. And, and, and if you can find places like this, they'll, they're they just wood that they throw away. You know, it, it's cheap to them. I'm sure if you speak to them and ask nicely, they'll they'll sort you out. Yeah, definitely a good tip. Um, I've mixed a bit of the... Um US brown with some black and uh, just put that here in the uh, in the shadow under the cheeks. That's interesting. You're you're going you're you're putting the shadows first. Every other approach you've gone darker and then gone straight to the loaded brush. Is is there a reason for that why you're doing with the face now? Mm. Actually not really. I mean the shadow color is not a lot stronger, it's just a bit more saturated mm -hmm. actually. So um, I'm just um, putting that in and going for the loader brush as a next step. Cool. Um, also, I have this solid base color that will really help me to do a blending on a large surface because if I would have like the black shining sh through still even a little bit, uh, that would be quite annoying too when you do small blendings like that. Okay, uh, some here to the side this color as well. Okay, you see it's just a tiny bit darker. Mm -hmm. um, and now I will load the brush with the original color and just put a bit of white in the tip. The uh, highlights in the beginning always look quite too extreme. Mm -hmm. That is because you have the, the contrast here to the very dark, not blended surface. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to be kind of... Uh... That, that's uh, interesting you, you bring that up. Uh, we had a question from on Slack for you. Um, when you're, you're doing something like the loaded brush technique, when you, if it was when, if you make a mistake, um, are there any tips you can give on how to how to fix to fix a mistake when when you're when you're doing this? Well, actually, the the best thing is to just let it dry and do another loaded brush over it. Mm -hmm. uh, or if it's just a tiny mistake within the blending, it's good if you have like a color gradient on the palette and then just pick the uh, exact color and ah, try to glaze it over that, that spot a little, uh -huh. or just hide it with a weathering <laughs> right. or, a, or a scratch of some he's, kind. He's, he'll have a, a cut with some blood or something. <laughs> yeah. 
bars and textures, little holes. You can actually do something of that kind on almost every surface. Oh, do you want to turn the miniature just slightly the the axis? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And if you're listening to this and you don't know what Slack is, Slack is uh, like a, a chat platform that Michael has set up. It's uh, it's like a 24-hour thing where uh, members of the, the Painting Buddha, if you buy any product from Painting Buddha, you get an invitation to Slack and you can meet other painters from all around the world who are, who are looking to paint um, of, of various skills. You, you, I mean, there are some incredible painters on there. Um, it's, it's good. It's good. It's good to meet other painters and, and to talk paint. It, it, it for me, it's helped. It's given me much more confidence speaking with other people that are going through the same thing. Yeah, yeah, and it's really nice because there's uh, quite a lot of exchange going on in the Slack, and people share their works and their ideas, not only about painting, but uh, it's very constructive actually. Mm. You get constructive crit and critique, and uh, yeah, it's very hard actually to find uh, people that would really give you. Uh, uh, like a good feedback on, on, on your paint job. And I heard a rumor that if, if you're a multi-pass member, that even you, Ben Comets, might give give feedback to people. <laughs> I heard that rumor as well, yeah. <laughs> no, I actually I give feedback to to everybody, to all of the guys that ask for it. Um, but yeah, um, I think it would be very nice if we do like the, the feedback session for our multi-pass holders where they can just send in pictures of their their figures mm -hmm. um, and we would discuss that because I think it's it's you learn actually the most from honest feedback on on your stuff because once you've reached a certain level it's really hard to get people really say what they think about you, your page yeah. because it's always like oh yeah yeah uh, that looks very good mm -hmm. but you know that there's something wrong, so you want some feedback. And yep. I think, therefore, that might be a very good idea. I think it's it's important to try and get feedback that's constructive, but it's also important to, to learn how to take criticism. Yeah, definitely. Because um, sometimes it, it can be difficult when you've painted something and, and you, you yourself, you think, oh, wow, that's really good. And then you show it to someone and they, they're like, well, actually, here's wrong and here's wrong and here's wrong. And inside, you might think, yeah, he, he's correct, but yeah, yeah. damn you. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, also, you have to, to find like a, a good way to, to express your criticism. You know, it's, it's quite easy to say, ah, uh, it's not good at all. Mm -hmm. uh, but to really say what is wrong, you know, it, it's harder to do that because uh, that would... Uh, you you actually need to know what is wrong for that, and you need skill for that as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I guess that's also one one of the reasons. Definitely. So you're going back in with some of the mid-tone there? Yeah, I uh, just had some mid-tone here to, towards the here the side mm -hmm. to soften it out a bit. Actually, coming back to, to the way you hold the miniature, it's some, something that I've noticed that you, you only ever turn the miniature. You don't move the, the painting hand. It's like you have one one spot for the brush, you know, and it's a, it's a, the miniature that moves, not you. You don't distort your body round to, to get to weird places, you know. <laughs> yeah. I, I used to do that in the beginning and you, you try and, like, that maybe you try and paint some weird angle at the back and instead of just turning the miniature in a way that's easiest for you to get in, like, try and lean over the <laughs> yeah, miniature like, and lean around. And like then, when, when kids play. Uh, you, can, you never get it steady, you know. Uh, um, Yeah, I think uh, that's one advantage of uh, painting miniatures is that you can really turn them around in your head. It's not like painting on canvas that is just yeah. limited to, to one flat plane. But, uh, but miniatures, you have all the freedom to turn them around and get a really perfect angle for the brush. Here, uh, 
my uh, position is quite fixed because of the camera. I, oh, um, yeah. Yeah. I'm not supposed to turn things around. <laughs> And a small little brush here on the on that side of the skull. Clean the brush and weather out the very last bit. Again, Ben Ben looks like he's always thinking about where that light source is coming from. Yeah, I want the, the top highlight to be here on the, this very spot uh -huh. in the middle. Uh, where I also have the later on the light, nice uh, little contrast with the metal frame that is around there. Are you doing, um, I can't remember, are you, are you doing non metallic metal or true metallic metal? Yeah, non metallic. Yeah, I wanted it to, to be uh, in line with the uh, other Sigma guy that I painted. Okay, just a bit of black to get the outer line here. Would you say that that's dark lining, or is that that's just kind of cleaning up where the gold was, where the, where the gold is? Um, I think it's it's a little bit of dark lining actually, uh, because we will keep some of that black in the very recess. Mm -hmm. Mm. But it's also make, will make the uh, the paint job look a lot cleaner if you make sure that you have uh, well uh, separated parts. I'm not sure actually if that part will be gold or uh, silver in the end. Um, I, I was thinking more of a silver tone because um, that would give me a higher color contrast for the uh, with the skull color. Ah, okay. Yep. Maybe um maybe pink? Yeah, yeah, pink. Uh, pink, pink might work. Uh, yeah. Do you have something going on with that pink? A <laughs> <laughs> bit more of a shadow color. Have you deepened that shadow color? Um, is, is that the same one? Uh, right now it's a bit darker, I guess. Um, and the uh, color that I have on, now on the brush is almost black because I'm just doing the sockets, the eye sockets. Uh -huh. Okay. Now I'm just uh, thinning down the original color, adding just a tiny bit of white. And I use that to uh, soft out some of the transition works that I've done previously. So that's, so you're you're doing a glaze, right? Yeah. So if, so if say, say I'd never painted a miniature before and I've just picked up myself a, a box of Age of Sigma Marines, how, how would you explain what, what a glaze is to me? Um, a, a glaze is a, a very, very thin uh, mix of paint. I can show that uh, here on the fingernail. You can hardly see anything. Uh -huh. um, but there are just some pigments left. Maybe it's... Even better visible here on that part. It's just very, very thin. Very thin. And just these tiny pigments will help to uh, set down on the surface and um, even things out because they are just, you, you mix like a middle tone between mm -hmm. the two extreme colors that you've used and you glaze over with that. And that will make it look a lot softer to the eye. I think it's also worth mentioning it's very important when doing a glaze not to, I mean, it's, it's important anyway when painting, but not to overload your brush. If you have your brush like loaded with, with a lot of very, very thin paint, yeah, um, it, it's just going to come straight off and go absolutely everywhere and you'll have, have no control. And then you're, you're kind of moving into to washing territory. Yeah. 
Okay, and that very thin color in the back of the brush, a little bit more white here to the top. Ah, okay, so you can you can kind of tailor the loaded brush technique. Yeah. So ah, okay. And it's really interesting also to to just uh, see what you can achieve with different uh, different consistency of paint in the brush. Uh, also on the back of the brush, the highlight color on the tip of the brush is actually always quite uh, quite heavy. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like I'm using the loaded brush right now. It's a lot more gentle than actually on the, on the first go, and a lot. Thinner. It's beautiful, dude. I would say painting bone is probably the the one thing that gives me the most trouble to get it to look to to look like it is actually bone. Yeah, um, I think the the problem with bone is that we always have that. Easy skeleton painting in, in mind, you know, just like bone color, a wash, and ah, <laughs> done. And maybe, um, maybe even maybe even a little um, dry brush over yeah, the top. Yeah, just sure. To uh, so I think because we have all that, we've done that in the past. So we have that in the back of the mind when when in the back of our minds when it comes to to painting bone, and you're like, ah, mm. okay, mm, ah, that doesn't look good. But you really have to think about light and color and light and shadows on bone as well, mm -hmm. and also working with textures like little dots and highlights can also help to get a nice textured feel to mm -hmm. the end of bones. Uh, I've showed that on the Papa Jumbo video, for example. And I have seen said Papa Jumbo in real life and he is very pretty. <laughs> very pretty. Thanks, mate. And not to say anything against dry brushing. I imagine if you have um, a fantasy army with a hundred skeletons, I would more than likely go with dry brushing them and giving them a wash. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. Yeah, imagine you would just spend half an hour painting a skull of each skeleton. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> <laughs> Good night. So Ben does actually take commissions. If you do have a skeleton <laughs> army that needs doing, um, please get in, get in contact. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I imagine the like one year of just painting skulls. <laughs>
that I would have the de- the desk clear, but the shelf was in front of me. Oh God! And it was really it, it's really demotivating <laughs> yeah, to okay. be painting and then to, and to do something. Think, oh, that looks good, and then to look up and just see this see, this yeah. half grey face looking at you with this look. <laughs> Hatred just, of just not stare, done, staring yeah. at you, yeah. Um, so, so if you do have something like that, and it's nothing to be ashamed of, so many hobby painters have that. But, but move it somewhere where that you can't see it. <laughs> yeah. Um, keep it out of the way. Um, yeah. So, so I don't know if you have uh, a shelf of shame. You might recognize that after you've been progressing within your paintwork. I, when I look at my stuff, I always try. And hope to see that I still get better every year. So if you start a project and have it there for a year, and then continue, you will have like different yep. styles or different. Uh, that's a, that's a very good point actually, because I've now got another shelf, but it's the, the it's not the shelf of shame, which by the way, brilliant, that's a thing now. Um, <laughs> is uh, the shelf of success where um, you I actually have my my very first miniature that I painted coming back in, which oh, yeah, is cool. just horrible. Um, but it's good to but, have but I have it left from right in a timeline of, yeah. of what I've painted and where I'm at so sometimes you you can get frustrated with something but then to look at that shelf you can see the progression you've made and and how you've improved and it can give you that, that spark back again it's yeah. like oh okay it's, it's not too bad actually <laughs> <laughs> okay the small transition here on the, on the other side um not as bright because I want the um, the light to be slightly stronger on that side. Just something out this light note with the medium color that I had from the wet on wet planning on the back. I noticed that uh, uh, that you weren't actually when you did that you weren't. Doing a stroke, it was a little, uh, like a little, little dots, yeah. and that, that that can really help just to break things up. And yeah, especially when you want to hide a line, it's just good to just dab next to the line mm-hmm. and overlap it in different ways so you break like the line of the former brush move. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, the um, metal framing here on the uh, around the skull um, will be done in, in a, like a dark iron. A very simple non-metal with um, a bit of dark sea blue. <laughs> <laughs> surprise, surprise. And a bit of white. We'll do that directly on the on the black. I know with um black it, it's Technically, it's the absence of light, you know. So, so really, when you you highlight black, you can highlight it with anything based on the on the the situate on the atmosphere of the, and the lighting of the model. Yeah. Um, but typically, I always associate black with with blue. Um, I always, if I were highlighting black, I'd always use like a bluey gray mm. uh, to go. With it just just it, naturally, it looks more pleasing to me. Yeah, it's the same for me. Uh, Met, for example. Uh, uses sometimes warm tones like brown mm. and that works quite well um, but somehow for me it's always I tend to, to do also go just straight for 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 blue without questioning that actually so uh, I have the black and white set from Scar 75 mm-hmm. and when it arrived um, I opened it and I was very surprised that it wasn't there was very little, there was like one color in there that was slightly cold. Everything else was very warm. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was just, it, it was surprising to me because I'd always associated black with, yeah. with the blue. And, and uh, I think I should have gone for the, the non-metallic metal set, which actually <laughs> is um, uh, the black with the blue. It, it, it's not wrong. I'm not, I'm definitely not saying that. It just, it, it's, it's, it yeah, was different it's, to my uh, mind. It's surprising to you what you expected. Yeah. yeah. But you can see just with uh, just with a tiny bit of dark sea blue and white, you can achieve quite actually quite a nice effect. I think I might have to get some dark sea blue. Ashamedly, I don't who, know who I, does it. I don't. I don't own any. Uh, <laughs> there's so many people on Slack. Out, out. <laughs> <Is> there, <laughs> 
there's so many people on Slack that now they all have um, Tank Brown and um, uh, and Dark Sea Blue. Dark sea Blue. But I think Vallejo have changed the name now. I think it's called Armor Brown. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You might be right. Yeah. Right. I was looking for it again. Um, you can still find some Tank Brown on, on at least on Amazon. Ah. Uh, okay. So. Um, but but it it does exist. So so just it, it was Tank Brown. Ben isn't like screwing with you. This isn't some, some <laughs> con yeah. uh, conspiracy to get you to go out and search for a paint that doesn't exist. Um, it, it does exist. I think uh, Vallejo have just changed the name to Armor Brown. back to, to what you were saying about if you can make a mistake it, it's only paint you, you yeah. can always fix a problem and if you're not working like super thick and smear everything right yeah like you can do I would say at least 20 mistakes before people would actually start seeing that there's too much paint on the you spot start building texture <laughs> you're sculpting <laughs> re-sculpting the face Some pure dark sea blue here around the rivet in the middle. And a little to the sides here. Oh wow, I didn't even see that rivet. <laughs> yeah, I smeared it. <laughs> no, oh, no, I wasn't I wasn't implying that. I just I didn't even see that, that rivet was there. I, f I find sometimes that, that with, with miniatures like this that, that have so much detail on them that sometimes I don't take it all in. Yeah. And and you go to paint something, you're like, wait, what what's that? I didn't know that was there. Yeah, especially when you have uh, have it just primed in black. Um, I think it's quite easy to to actually oversee some of the details, mm -hmm. and it's it's easier with black and white because you even highlight the small elements, kind of pre-highlight them. is not really on spot so I need to set that up but other than that I think for a small detail like that it's really nice also I just added some like two, two tiny lines for scratches um, the uh, we have to keep in mind that it will be covered quite a lot with the uh, with the other layer of plastic <laughs> of mm -hmm. plastic miniature uh, so you see here because we have the, the skull over it Mm -hmm. Just put that in place. Ah, cool. So, see, so yeah, so you don't even see again. It's it's not most of it. But remember, your work. Yeah, it's but and if you peek under there, you you think, ah, oh, okay, there there are some scratches. <laughs> Actually, with with the the scratches, that's something that you would do as you're going section by section. You wouldn't finish the model and then come back and then put scratches. Mm. You know no. what I mean? Like like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like weathering. I actually, I would do it just on the spot, and um, I think in the end, I'm just looking for the overall contrast. Maybe if some, like, I maybe if I discover a mistake in the end, and I want to hide that with a scratch, or I think okay, this here needs more detailed attention, then I would just go mm -hmm. uh, go and correct it in the end. But actually, one of the things I do in the end is more like um, unifying things with glazes of. Uh, of one certain tone in the shadows, for example, um, but I actually finished the each part about ninety five percent, I would say. Oh, okay. Okay, a little bit of uh, blue into the uh, or dark shadow color from from the skull to just glaze it here into our. Very shadow here, and very dark shadow here. Would you say it's rare for you to, to actually shadow with pure black? 
you would always add like a, a tip of some color into it to, to give it slightly more interest. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, also, black grays down the color quite a bit. So um, sometimes you need still quite a strong saturation mm -hmm. and it just works easier when you add a little bit of color. Mm -hmm. Tank browns are good for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, that's it for the skull. Um, next chapter will be the bright red armor, or rather bright red. <laughs> okay.